All right, get ready because uh, today we're going deep into some pretty uncharted territory. Oh. Psychic resonance. Okay. And its potential connection to autism. Hmm. I know psychic stuff might sound a little, I don't know, yeah, out there, but a little woo -woo. that's what makes this deep dive so fascinating, don't you think? I think so, yeah. I mean, always intriguing to explore these kind of unconventional ideas. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. our guide for this deep dive is a website called Cheap ABA. Okay. And I've heard of them. Yeah, despite the name. Yeah. It's actually like a treasure trove of information on autism, blog posts, ebooks, all sorts of resources. Lots of good stuff there. What really caught our eye was this concept of psychic resonance as a possible aspect of the autistic experience. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That definitely piqued my curiosity as well, especially considering the unique ways autistic individuals experience and interact with the world, which we'll definitely be unpacking today. For sure. Yeah. So let's just start with the basics. Okay. Okay. Sure. The website emphasizes this heightened sensory sensitivity as a key characteristic for a lot of autistic people. Right, right. But like, what does that actually look like? Beyond just, I don't know, disliking loud noises. Yeah. Like, what are we actually talking about here? Yeah, you know, it's almost like imagining the world like with the volume turned way up, not yeah. just for sound, but yeah. for all your senses, oh, you know, yeah. textures might feel overwhelming. Oh, yeah. Background noise becomes impossible to filter out. Yeah. And even fluorescent lights can be a source of real discomfort. Interesting. Yeah. It's like right. experiencing everything with an intensity most people can't even fathom. Wow. So it's not just about like preference. Right. It's about like a fundamentally different way of processing sensory input. Exactly. And, you know, yeah. it's interesting to consider how that might impact someone's daily life, right? Have you ever, like, felt completely bombarded in a crowded room or maybe been really bothered by the texture of a certain fabric? Oh, yeah. Those are tiny glimpses into that heightened sensory experience. Yeah. And for some autistic individuals, it's their constant reality. Mm. That's a powerful way to put it. Yeah. And the website kind of suggests that this heightened sensitivity mm -hmm. could be linked to something even deeper. Okay. Strong intuition. Okay. Which they connect to this idea of psychic resonance. Interesting. So how do we like get from sensory input yeah. to something that seems almost, well, like extrasensory? Right. Well, you know, it starts by understanding that intuition isn't necessarily some like mystical force. Okay. It's more about... Um, you know, a heightened ability to process subtle cues I, and emotional information, like well, having an incredibly sensitive radar got it. for those things. So, like, when you just know a friend is upset, even if they haven't said anything? Yes. Is that what we're talking about? That's a great example. <gasps> You're intuitively picking up on their emotional state through their body language, uh -huh. their tone of voice, even, like, tiny micro-expressions they might not even be aware of. Wow. And for some autistic individuals... Mm -hmm. This intuitive awareness can be incredibly sharp, leading to um, was... deeper and more profound connections with others. Got it. And that's where the website brings in this idea of psychic resonance. Okay, so maybe it's not about like mm -hmm. mind reading or seeing the future, right. but more about like a deeper level of yeah. empathy and connection than most people experience. Exactly. Uh -huh. And what makes this concept particularly interesting in the context of autism yeah. is the way it challenges some, you know, like what? Common misconceptions. Like the idea that autistic people are somehow less capable of empathy or connection. Precisely. Yeah. Often the focus is on the challenges. Right. If this perspective flips the script, <laughs> what if this heightened sensitivity, this ability to pick up on those subtle cues actually makes these individuals more attuned to the emotional world around them. That's a really thought-provoking yeah. shift in perspective. Yeah. And the website takes it even further yeah. by highlighting the power of like shared experiences, mm. particularly among autistic individuals, yeah. as like a key factor in fostering this sense of resonance. Absolutely. Yeah. Imagine finding others who understand your unique challenges and strengths. Yeah. People who truly like get you yeah. on a fundamental level wow. without you having to like mask or explain yourself. Right. That feeling of being seen and understood can be incredibly validating, almost like a pew, like a sigh of relief. Yeah. It sounds like finding your tribe. Yes. A place where you can truly be yourself. Yeah. And while that's, I mean, that's powerful for anyone. Of course. I imagine it's 
particularly meaningful uh, yeah. for those who often feel misunderstood or different. You hit the nail on the head. It challenges the notion that, you know, autism is like a barrier to connection. Right. And instead suggests it might actually open the door to a different kind of connection. Yeah. One that's even deeper and more meaningful because it's rooted in shared experience and understanding. Interesting. And that's a that's a really powerful concept to unpack. Yeah. Yeah. It is. But I also wonder if there's, you know, a, a potential downside to this level of sensitivity and connection. Yeah. Is it always easy to manage? That's a great question. Yeah. And one that deserves some exploration because even positive traits right. can come with their own set of challenges. For sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back. I'm I'm really curious to hear if the website gives like any specific examples of this so-called psychic resonance in action. Well, it mentions how some autistic individuals describe feeling um, a particularly intense connection with certain people. Okay. Almost like they can sense each other's emotions or thoughts without needing words. Have you ever encountered anything like that? Hmm. I can see how that would, you know, resonate with this idea of heightened empathy and yeah. intuition. Yeah. What you're talking about. Yeah. Like, if you're already super attuned to subtle cues, maybe it's not. I don't know. Yeah. Such a leap to imagine yeah. a deeper level of nonverbal communication happening. Right. And the website goes on to say that these connections can be incredibly comforting. Okay. Especially for people who might struggle with social interaction or like feel like they don't quite fit in. Right. I can only imagine how validating that must feel. Absolutely. Imagine like finding someone who just gets you yeah. on such a fundamental level mm -hmm. that you don't have to constantly explain yourself. Right. Or like mask your true feelings you know that kind of connection yeah. can be incredibly liberating almost like a like a safe haven in a world that often feels overwhelming it's like finding that one person who speaks your language exactly even if it's not a language everyone else understands exactly and it's not limited to like human connections either oh interesting the website mentions instances where autistic individuals describe a strong connection with animals okay almost like um a form of interspecies communication. Yeah. Which, which, you know, might not be as far-fetched as it sounds. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, there's definitely, like, a growing body of research on, you know, the human-animal bond. Yeah. And some studies, like, do suggest that people with autism might have, like, a unique ability to connect with animals on a deeper level. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it, it kind of challenges our typical understanding of communication, you know. It makes you wonder if maybe... Like they're tapping into a different way of communicating, one yeah. that's less about verbal language and more about right. like energy, yeah. emotions, that kind of thing. Yeah, like a different channel. Like a different thing. channel entirely. Right. Yeah, it's it's a reminder that there's so much we still don't know about like the full spectrum of human experience and right. how we connect with the world, both with each other and with like other species. Now, it's important to point out that the website doesn't present like any hard scientific evidence to back up this idea of, yeah, you know, right. psychic phenomena. Right. So we should definitely approach these claims with a healthy dose of, I don't know, yes. critical thinking. Right. Absolutely. You know, as much as I love a good mystery, it's yeah. it's important to be discerning and not just accept everything we read at face value. Right. But but I also think it's it's worth acknowledging that even if we like set aside the more supernatural interpretations mm. there's still something like yeah incredibly valuable here you mean like the idea that finding and nurturing deep connections yes can have a profound impact on well-being yeah especially for like autistic individuals exactly whether you call it you know psychic resonance mm. or, or just plain old you know Artists. human connection yeah. that need to feel seen and understood is universal yeah and for people who often feel like outsiders Finding those, you know, yeah. resonant connections yeah. can be genuinely life changing. Totally. But, you know, that leads to another point the website raises, the the potential downsides of this heightened sensitivity. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It talks about how like some autistic individuals describe feeling like emotional sponges mm -hmm. absorbing the energy and feelings of those around them. OK. If you're that tuned in, I imagine that could get like pretty overwhelming. Absolutely. It's like... um like empathy on overdrive. Oh, wow. While it allows for like deep connection. Yeah. It also means you're more susceptible to like taking on other people's emotions. Yeah. Which can be, you know, yeah. exhausting yeah. and emotionally draining if you don't have 
you know, good coping mechanisms. It's like having like a super sensitive antenna that's picking up signals from everywhere. Yeah. But you don't have a way to like filter out the noise. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and that's why the website stresses the importance of like self-care and setting healthy boundaries. Yeah. Especially for those who are, you know, highly empathic. Right. You need you need strategies to like protect your own energy yeah. and emotional well being. So like things like spending time in nature, mm -hmm. mindfulness practices, learning to like ground yourself. Yes. Those yeah. could all be like really crucial tools. Absolutely. You know, it's about recognizing like your own needs mm -hmm. and limits yeah. and understanding that, you know, you're not obligated to constantly absorb the emotions of everyone around you. And speaking of boundaries. Yeah. The website also touches on like another aspect of this mm. intense connectivity that I think is worth like exploring okay. the potential for it to make it like harder to distinguish your own emotions from those you're picking up from others. Yeah. What happens when those lines get blurred? That's a really important point. Imagine like constantly absorbing, you know, emotional input without a clear sense of where your own feelings begin and end. Yeah. It, it would be incredibly disorienting, almost like, you know, losing your sense of self in a sea of other people's emotions. Wow. You know? And if you can't separate your own feelings from those around you. Right. I can see how that would make it really difficult to like assert your own needs or set yeah. boundaries. Right. You you might end up like constantly trying to please others or avoid conflict yeah. because you're so attuned to like their emotional reactions, yeah. which can be, you know, a recipe for burnout and resentment over time. For sure. Oh, yeah. So developing self-awareness and like strong communication skills mm -hmm. become even more crucial in those situations. Yes. You need yeah. to be able to clearly express your own needs and limits even when you're feeling overwhelmed by what others are experiencing. Absolutely. It's about finding that that balance yeah. between connecting with others right. and maintaining a healthy sense of self. And and that's a skill that's, you know, valuable for everyone, yeah. whether they identify as autistic or not. Yeah. Relationships are a two way street. Totally. It makes me think about all the times I felt like pressured to go along with something or put my own needs aside because yeah. I didn't want to like upset someone else. Yeah. It's so easy to like fall into that trap. It is. Especially if you're like naturally empathetic. But true connection shouldn't come at the expense of your own well-being, you know? It, uh, it's about finding that like sweet spot where you can be, you know, supportive. Yeah. And compassionate without sacrificing your own needs in the process. I love that. Yeah. It's like even if you're like the most empathetic person in the world, yeah. you still deserve to have your own oxygen mask firmly in place. Exactly. Before helping others. So, you know, we've we've talked about the the potential benefits of this this so-called psychic resonance, mm -hmm. but also like the, the challenges that come with that heightened sensitivity. Right. But you know what I find like most intriguing about this whole exploration yeah. is 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 the way it challenges our conventional understanding of autism right it really like flips the script on some common stereotypes you know it definitely does i mean how often do we hear about like the social and emotional challenges right. associated with autism That's exactly but this perspective like highlights the incredible strengths yeah and potential that can also be part of the experience for sure it's like we're seeing a whole other side of the coin exactly it's it's a reminder that autism isn't like a monolithic entity it's uh, yeah. it's a spectrum encompassing mm. a wide range of strengths mm. challenges and yeah. ways of you know experiencing the world and that's a really powerful message to like carry with us as we continue to learn and grow in our understanding of like neurodiversity. Absolutely. You know, there's still so much we don't know. Yeah. And I think like approaching these conversations with curiosity and yeah. open mindedness is essential. I completely agree. Yeah. And speaking of curiosity, mm -hmm. this deep dive has definitely sparked some like new questions for me. Oh, yeah. Like what? For example, are there any practical ways to like yeah. cultivate and manage this heightened empathy and intuition yeah whether we label it psychic or not right like if it's a skill can you learn to like hone it mm. that's a great question yeah and one that you know i think deserves its own deep dive maybe we can like explore that in a future episode i would love that yeah but for now it's time to wrap up this fascinating exploration wow this deep dive is really like open my eyes to a whole new way of thinking about autism. Yeah, me too. It's it's really fascinating. Yeah. As we wrap things up, let's kind of revisit what we've learned from this website, Cheap ABA. Okay. Sounds good. 
we started by like diving into the world of heightened sensory sensitivity. Right. Exploring how, you know, intense sensory experiences can be a constant reality yeah. for so many autistic individuals. It's like living life on high volume, you know? Yeah, and then we kind of ventured into the realm of intuition and empathy mm -hmm. and how, you know, this heightened sensitivity might actually translate into a deeper capacity for connecting with others. Picking up on those subtle cues that most people miss. We even touched upon the idea of, like, interspecies communication, like the unique bonds autistic people might have with animals. It makes you wonder, doesn't it, about all the different ways we can experience connection. It really does. Yeah. And, you know, while the website uses the term psychic resonance, right. we also acknowledge that there's no, like, hard scientific evidence to back it up. It's important to be, you know, critical in our thinking. Absolutely. Yeah. But even if we set aside the more, I don't know, supernatural interpretations. Sure. The core message here is still really powerful. It is. It's about, like, the universal need to feel seen, understood, accepted. And for people who often feel like, you know, outsiders. Yeah. Finding those, like, deep connections. Yeah. Can be life-changing. Absolutely. It can be like finding your place in the world, you know. And we also talked about, like, the importance of self-care and boundaries. Mm -hmm. Especially for those who, like, experience that heightened empathy. Right. It's like having a superpower that needs to be managed carefully. Exactly. You have to protect your own energy. Otherwise, you will burn out. For sure. So as we, like, wrap up this deep dive, I want to leave you with a thought. Okay. Think about a time when you felt a really strong connection with someone. Okay. A moment of shared understanding that went beyond words. Hmm. I like that. Maybe it was a friend a family member, even a stranger? Could that be a form of resonance, even if we don't have, like, a scientific label for it? That's a great question to ponder. I encourage you to pay attention to those moments of deep connection in your own life and see what, you know, insights they might offer. I love that. And maybe even more importantly, you know, let's all challenge ourselves to approach every interaction with a little more curiosity a little more openness. Maybe we all have the potential for deeper connection than we realize. That's a beautiful thought. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of autism and psychic resonance. It's been a pleasure. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep those minds open. To new possibilities. Exactly.